Hey guys, Liz Stapleton here from ElizabethStapleton.com. Today I'm going to talk about the two essential things you need to legally protect your blog. If you find this video useful, please take a second to like and subscribe. It really helps me in growing this channel and I'd really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and dig in. Um, so first of all, because you're probably wondering why I'm talking about this, I am an attorney. I don't, uh, I'm a full-time Pinterest manager right now. I don't practice law currently because I decided I'd rather be a happy person. But I love the law, I have a huge interest in it, and so when I started blogging back in 2014, um, I kind of started naturally slowly digging into the legal issues surrounding blogging and that bloggers deal with. And so I ended up talking about sort of, you know, the legal issues bloggers need to be aware of at conferences. I spoke at it um, at FinCon the last two years. FinCon's a financial bloggers conference. It's awesome. You should go if you haven't. Um, even if you're not a financial blogger, it's just great. <laughs> um, so I've spoken on it at conferences. I've spoken about this topic of sort of legally protecting your blog and your business um, at virtual summits, such as the Rebel Boss Summit earlier this year. And so I really love talking about this issue and helping bloggers sort of understand what's going on um, in terms of what they need to do to protect their blog and business, because I know it's not always easy to understand. So that's sort of my qualifications in talking about this. I do want to say that this is not legal advice. A little disclaimer here: like I'm not your lawyer. This is this is a inf this is informational and educational only. You may still need to talk to a lawyer, um, you know, based on what I say in this. But um, it's not legal advice. Okay, I'm not your lawyer. I'm probably not licensed where you live. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and dig in though, because what I'm talking about is not necessarily specific to state, but it is specific to U.S. So I am talking more about U.S. Some of it is applicable to everyone else, but the perspective I'm talking about it is as a US-based attorney. Okay, let's dig in. Um, so the first essential thing you absolutely need to legally protect your blog is a privacy policy. And I'm sure you've heard this before, especially with all the uproar of GDPR last year. In fact, I wrote a massive GDPR guide. I'll link to it below in the description. Um, if you're like wondering what GDPR is or you never got around to actually dealing with it, you should check, check out that guide. Um, but yeah, but a privacy policy, um, you know, basically tells your readers what data you're collecting, how you're collecting it, why you're collecting it, and what you're doing with it. Um, and GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation based out of the EU, requires that you have one. Okay, and you may be thinking, I'm not in the EU. Why do I need one? Well, GDPR is pretty far reaching. And so if you have an audience that's located in the EU, they don't have to be an EU like citizen. I mean, like the EU is not a country. It's a they don't have to be a citizen of any of the EU countries. Um, but if they're just physically located there, like maybe they're traveling in Europe and so they're accessing your site from France, um, you know, whatever the case may be, you need a privacy policy. But also a lot of states have certain laws requiring this as well. So a privacy policy, like I said, you need to explain what data you're collecting, why you're collecting it, how you're collecting it, and what you're doing with it. And if you think you're not collecting data, I'm going to just say hooey, because I guarantee you probably are. Um, if you use Google Analytics, you're collecting data. If you allow comments on your site, you're collecting data. You know, um, if people, if you have a contact page, you're collecting data because they have to enter their information to contact you. Um, you know, so you, you need a privacy policy. If you're using Facebook Pixel for ads or, or Pinterest Pixel for ads or what anything for ads, you're collecting data, you're using stuff. So make sure you have a privacy policy. Okay. The other thing you absolutely need is um, disclaimers and disclosures. So I had a little disclaimer at the beginning of this video where I was like, hey, I'm an attorney, but I'm not your attorney. This isn't legal advice. It's informational only. That's an example of a disclaimer because I am an attorney. I need to explain that. If you are also an attorney, probably need to explain that. If you're in the personal finance niche, and I say that just because I have a back, I started in the personal finance niche, um, you need to, if you're not a licensed financial advisor or whatever, and you're talking about that stuff, you might, you need to say, not might, you need to say, hey, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. <laughs> the information on here is from my own personal experience. It is not professional. You may need to talk to a professional. Um, it's educational and entertainment purposes only, something like that. I would phrase it better, and I have an actual like script for that. But um, you need to disclaim uh, sort of your liability there. And you also need to disclose things like affiliate links, which I'm sure you've heard about. I'm sure you know you need to disclose affiliate links. You need to do it before they click on the affiliate link. You also probably would like to have it um, on your blog's legal page if it were. Um, so 
disclaimers and disclosures such as those are really important to have on your site. If you sell some other disclaimers and disclosures, you might want to consider is like an earnings disclaimer. So if you do income reports or if you have like case studies or testimonials saying people earn this much doing what you told them, then you need to say, hey, I can't guarantee that you're going to get the exact same results. Like it depends on you. Um, these, this is just an example. It's not a guarantee. So you need to do like earning disclaimers like that. So, so those are some of the, the disclaimers and disclosures you want to consider. Okay. Bonus. If you sell products or even services potentially, but specifically products, you probably also want a third thing to legally protect your blogger business. You want terms and conditions. Okay. Terms and conditions are like the rules for your stuff. Okay. It's kind of like saying my house, my rules, right? Um, they're the rules for people using your site and products. You know, you don't want people buying your product and then turning out and reselling it, especially if it's a digital product. Like that's a no, no. I mean, if it's like a physical product, like that happens all the time, that probably doesn't matter because they're not using it anymore after they sell it. Um, but if it's digital products, you know, you got to be like, this is for personal use only. This is not for commercial use. Um, example of this in the real world, if you aren't familiar, is like, you know how you buy like a box of like the individually wrapped Advil or something. Um, and so the box is fine. You can sell a box, but if you look at the packets, it says not for individual resale. That's what I'm talking about. You probably see it in like boxes of like bags of snack gummies and stuff too. Whereas like, if you look at the package, it says not for individual resale. Um, so that's kind of similar where it's like not really for a commercial resale to sell one at a time. Um, Okay, so terms and conditions kind of let you do that. You can also limit your liability for any errors or, or inaccuracies on your website or in your products. You also want to you know, spell out your refund policy, your intellectual property rights, um, and your ability to terminate use of your website for any abuses at your own discretion. Okay, so review. The three things you is that, ooh, let's try that again. The three things um, that are essential for you to legally protect your blog and business are first, a privacy policy, second, disclosures and disclaimers policies, and then potentially, depending on what your blog and business are, terms and conditions. Um, so you're probably wondering where to get these things, okay? Um, so there's, diff there's a few different ways you could do this. The first and most difficult is you could do a bunch of research and figure out what all needs to go in them. Um, I would definitely recommend you start with my top 10 things you need on your legal page checklist. It's a free download um, that you should be able to get over on my site. And I will link to that in the description. Um, you know, but that's likely gonna take a lot of your time and be a lot of work. The second would be to search for free templates. Um, the problem with free templates is that they're free for a reason and they likely weren't written by an attorney. Uh, they also likely don't include everything you need to protect your blogger business. The third and most cost-effective way would be to purchase templates from an actual attorney who knows their stuff. Uh, that way you're getting templates written by an attorney without having to actually pay for the attorney to customize them. So you would get the template and you would customize it to your needs. Um, the fourth and final way would be to hire an attorney to draft those documents for you. And so if you can afford to do that, do that. But if you can't, then I would, the second best option I would say is to buy templates from an attorney. Um, and so if you're wondering where to get those, well, the first place I would recommend is my website because I sell them. Um, but there's a lot of other places out there too. Uh, I've done the research and I've, uh, priced mine fairly and I think you're not going to find a better deal. They're, they're great templates. They're super easy to use. Um, I bundle the three, the privacy policy terms and conditions and disclaimers for just 147. So I will include that link in the description as well. But you can always do some more research and, and see if you wanna go somewhere else. Um, and then I'm actually putting together something special on that front as well, a certain workshop to help people understand and customize. That's that's gonna be on the horizon. So um, definitely go sign up for my email list if you wanna hear about that, if you're struggling with the whole legal stuff. Um, go sign up for the, the checklist, the 10 things uh, on your legal page, and you'll definitely get to hear about that when I've got it all put together. Uh, but bottom line is you do need to protect your site and your business, particularly if your site is your business, um, with privacy policy, disclaimers, disclosures, and potentially terms and conditions. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, 
And if it was, please take a second to like and subscribe. I appreciate it.